the Lamb of God. Two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter, the rock. Now please turn with me to Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 7. Isaiah 49, and that's found on page 644 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. Page 644 of the Pew Bibles. Listen to me, O coastlands, and hearten you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant. Israel in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Those last words are very important. Uh, the ones, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, that's our God, who has chosen you. And because God has chosen us, I want to direct your attention to responding to the call. It is God who first chose us, and we respond out of faithfulness to God. I want to ask you a question. Can any one person make a difference? Just one person. Can I make a difference? Can you make a difference in this world? Well, the prophet Isaiah proclaims for all Israel to hear, listen to me. And we just read that in 49.1, listen to me. Pay attention, you people. The psalmist confesses that the Lord has put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise for our God. Psalm 49. 
Paul, the apostle, preaches that he, Paul, was called by God, by God's will, to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he puts it this way. Paul, uh, when they wrote a letter in the old days, uh, they put their name right up front. The first word is me, whoever is writing the letter. So the first word in this letter to the, uh, the Corinthians is, uh, he sent a letter to them, was Paul, summoned by the will and purpose of God to be an apostle. And an apostle is a special messenger. Called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. That's the way Paul put it. That he was called by Jesus Christ to give the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Andrew, the disciple of hairs of Jesus from John the Baptist. He's a, he's a disciple of John the Baptist. And he says to his brother, Simon, he says, we have found the Messiah. We have found the Christ. So Andrew brought his brother, Simon, to Jesus. Jesus took one look at him and said, well, yeah, you're Simon, but I'm going to call you Cephas, Peter, the rock. For those of us who follow God's call, we can all make a difference. Each and every one of us has been called by God to make a difference. And we do that because we're invited by God to invite others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, heaven's going to be a much nicer place because I took a friend of mine. It's going to be a nicer place because you took a friend of yours to heaven. And you and that friend, and I and my friend, we're going to be there for all of eternity. Worshiping and praising the true and living God. Well, Israel was chosen for the benefit of the whole world. God decided to look at these few people and said, Okay, you're going to be my messengers, you're going to be my apostles, you're going to be my priests, you're going to be the ones who are going to spread the word of God, give the gospel to the entire world. And God told Abraham when God gave him this mission in Genesis 12, 3, he says, all the families, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Because of Abraham's obedience, you and I today are being blessed. Yet the passage I read here in the Bible, Isaiah 4 to 9, shows Israel in captivity in Babylon. God allowed Israel's enemies to subdue and capture and enslave the same people. God said, you're going to be in charge, you're going to be sharing the word of God with all the nations, to the coastlands, to the ends, to the Gentiles, to everyone. Yet here they are in captivity. And God selects this young man, Jeremiah, to be a leader to make a difference. We're in captivity. Now Israel was never faithful to the Lord. It was the Lord's faithfulness that allowed Israel to fulfill even a small part of the mission God had given her to fulfill. But God knew that when God called him. God knows that when God calls us to be in the army of God. And the Lord has called each and every one of us for a mission in life. This year, we have a new year. It's my prayer that all of us would move closer to the call that 
God has put upon us. God has given each and every one of us a mission. And I hope we can find that out this year. Now in the prophet Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah 1.5, the Lord said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. That tells me something about babies in the womb, that God knows each and every baby in the womb by name. The Lord goes on to say, I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. So the prophets, the Jewish prophets, were not just prophets to Jerusalem and the Jews and Israel. They were prophets to the nations. All the nations of the world. Red or yellow, black or white, all the nations in the world are precious in God's sight. And this revelation came to the prophet Jeremiah, not as an old man, but it came to him as a youth. Some of us are fortunate to get and understand the clear call of God as youths. And I admire anyone who, at a young, tender age, anyone like Chelsea, who would give up an opportunity to go to Wall Street and make a whole lot of money, go into industry and become some powerful person and accept the call of God to be one of God's servants. Now understand this, not all of God's servants are going to be ministers. We're all called where we are. That's where God calls us. And if you're on the job, we're to minister to those among whom we work. We're to live the life of Jesus Christ that they may see Jesus Christ in each and every one of us. And some of us who are young, we're just fortunate to be able to accept that call and go with the will of God. Now I know someone who... Uh, knew that a long time ago. When he fought it, he didn't want to go into it. He fought God. Whoa, what a, what a tough dude. Until he was about 40 when God said, Irving, why don't you give up? And I was blessed. I decided to give up and come into the ministry to serve our Lord and our God. Well, some of us become aware of our call sometimes just before we die. One professor realized what his call was when almost on his deathbed he looked back and said, well, you know, I have influenced the lives of thousands of students. Perhaps that was the call that God laid upon me. <coughs> Perhaps we come to realize our call in a crisis. Sometimes we discover we were born to help a loved one through a dark valley. Someone comes alongside someone who's having a hard time and says, I know you're having a hard time. I'm here for you. Sometimes the person can't even help you with a few dollars or whatever it is. It could be a very poor person who says, I'm praying for you. I'm here to help you through this. Well, this month we celebrate the 85th anniversary or birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who graduated with a Ph.D. from Crozier College. And he was one of the first people of color allowed to be able to graduate with a PhD. And scarcely was the ink dry on his sheepskin when he was just called, come out, come and help your people. Come and set your people free. Come and get your people out of bondage. 
and he responded. I mean, somebody with a PhD, I guess I could have gone out and made some money somewhere. But he responded to the call of God to lead his people out of bondage. The United Methodist Church this month acknowledges Human Relations Day. And that's a way to highlight ministries that rec recognize the right of all of God's children. Human Relations Day. And it's a way to help all of God's people to fulfill their potential. So how does the church handle the release of the captive, as Jeremiah did, as Isaiah did. The release of so many, today we have so many people of color, especially men, black men, who are incarcerated. And the fastest growing industry in America is private prisons. Some guy puts some money into prison and he figures out, well, if I could feed all these black guys for a dollar a day, uh, I'll make some money. And then his son comes along and says, well, if you can feed them for 50 cents a day, we can make twice as much money. How does the church handle incarceration of all of these men of color in prison? How does the church handle the plight of 11 million undocumented persons? Residents. I was uh, preaching last night and one of the seniors says, well, I'm really upset. We've got all these uh, foreigners coming into our country. And, uh, well, I bit my tongue for a start, being one of these foreigners who came in. And then it occurred to me to say, well, you know, just a few generations ago, you're now in your 90s, just a few generations ago, your parents were foreigners. And if you're not a Native American, an Indian, then you're one of the foreigners. We're all foreigners in this land. So how do we handle the plight of the 11 million undocumented persons. A few generations ago, did anyone have documents? I don't think so. So now the people of a different hue are coming in. Where did the documents come in? So where do we stand on the issues that face our nation? How can we make a difference? The young prophets did. They turned to God. They asked for their mission. In fact, God gave them a mission. Prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah. And even the, the apostle Paul was granted a mission that changed the world and changed the nations. Well, for us, how do we stand? At our baptism, we were all called into service. When we were baptized, we were all called into service for the Lord. You say, well, I was baptized as a baby, and I didn't know I had nothing to do with it. No, you were sealed with the seal of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now that we're a little older, we must ask the tough question. Why am I here? Why am I in church this morning? A question, who am I? Who am I that the Lord has taken notice of me? What is my place in life? How can I be in the will of God? What is my place and position? What should I do? As Christians, we are in the Lord's army. 
It is good to take time to consider whether we have some sense of calling, some sense of being named by God, some sense of being born to some role in life, or simply of being the right person at the right time to help one of my brothers or sisters in Jesus Christ. Let us not let other things get in the way. Let us serve God rather than living in torment, not responding to the call of God. I assure you, when I was uh, disobedient to God, my life was not uh, the most pleasant of all. Uh, not that it's the best right now, but it's a lot better than it was when I was not responding to the call of God. Let us ask in this new year, Lord, what can I do? Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, why am I here? Give me my mission. Tell me what it is you would really like me to do. Lord, help me to respond to the call of God. Responding to the call of God. Let us now stand and repeat him eight in Let's repeat him eight in three.
Chelsea is now going to lead us. Uh, we have uh, expanded our territory, or at least our bishop has. And uh, please be seated. Uh, you will see at the top of the next thing it says FWS uh, number 2242. That's the little black uh, hymn book, which we don't, do not use here. We have it over at the other church. So we'll, um, we'll not wor worry about 2242. But uh, Chelsea will come and uh, please respond. O oh God of mercy, as you walked in the wilderness with your people, walk with us for unity. You land God's land where love shines through. We stretch out our hands over the sea of ignorance. Divide it and walk with us on the ground of unity. O oh God of forgiveness, as you walked with your son on Golgotha, walk with us for unity. Build the land of God's land where our love shines through. We carry the cross of unfaithfulness. And transform it into faithfulness and walk with us as we become one. O oh God of salvation, as you walk with the witnesses of the resurrection, walk with us for unity. Feel the land of God's plan where love shines through. We see the tomb of old habits. Bring hope out of the tomb and walk with us on the way of the new creation.
now and forever, and all of God's children said, Okay. <laughs>